Greetings. In this video, we're going to take a look at a product from Atlona called the AT-DISP-CRTL. This unit is a compact display controller from Atlona that's designed to power on and off in a remote display. To get started, let's have a look at the unit itself. And after that, let's jump into the web GUI interface and see how to configure this device for your application. Okay, here we have the front of the device itself, and you can see here's a HDMI connector called HDMI out. This is where you'll connect your display, that's the signal coming out of the box. And beside that is a connector for HDMI in. This is where your source will connect to. Let's flip it around and have a look at the back of the unit. All right, here is the back of the display controller. And you can see on the far side here, we have two LAN ports. One is labeled PoE. Uh, when plugged into this device with a PoE enabled network switch, this will also power the device. Uh, and you can also plug in your ethernet here to connect to the web GUI interface and control this device. And also use these ports to send IP commands to your display. Beside that, we have a green Phoenix connector here, which is used for RS-232 and IR control commands. And beside that, if you're powering the device locally, there is a USB micro DC 5 volt port. Now that we've taken a look at the front and the back of the unit, let's put this on the network and get the IP address and get into the web GUI interface. The display controller includes a built-in web server. Alona recommends that the web server be used to set up the display controller as it provides intuitive management of all features. Make sure that an Ethernet cable is connected between the LAN port of the display controller and the network. Launch a web browser and enter the IP address of the unit. For more information on finding the web address or defining the web address of your unit, check the display controller manual which can be found on the display controller product page at atlona.com. Once connected, the display controller login page will be displayed. Type admin using lowercase characters into the username field. Type Atlona with a capital A into the password field. This is the default password. The password field is case sensitive. When the password is entered, it will be masked. Click the submit button or press the enter key on the keyboard. After logging in, the info page will be displayed. The info page provides various information about the display controller, including software version and video information. Now click the display button in the menu bar. This page provides controls for CEC, device timers, and configuration for controlling external devices. CEC command. Click the on button to test sending the power on command to the display device. Click the off button to toggle the power to an off state. Plus, minus, and mute to increase, decrease, or mute the audio output respectively. Display auto power. Set this toggle to enabled to allow the display controller to send the power on command to the display when an AV signal is detected. When the AV signal is no longer present, the display controller will send power off command to the display. If this feature is not desired, then set to disabled. This feature is enabled by default. Auto power off timer sets the time interval before the command to power off the display is sent. When an AV signal is no longer present, the default value is 15 seconds. Available values are 15 seconds to one hour. Lamp cooldown timer sets the projector lamp cooldown timer in seconds. This value specifies the time interval that must elapse after the display control off command is sent before the display power on command can be sent. This feature is used to prevent the projector from missing a power on command while the lamps are cooling. Available values are 10 to 300 seconds. The default setting is 10 seconds. Display warm up timer sets the time between when the projector lamp has been turned on to when it can receive new commands. Click this drop down list to select the display warm up time interval. Available values are 10 seconds to 300 seconds. The default value is 10 seconds. Control type. Click this drop down to select the control type. Available, available settings include CEC, IP, RS-232, and IR remote. Now click the RS-232 button in the menu bar. This page provides settings for the local RS-232 control. RS-232 settings for local control. 
refer to the user manual for the display devices to obtain the proper RS-232 settings. Now click the EDID button in the menu bar. This page provides controls for selecting and storing EDID data. Click the input drop-down list to select the desired EDID. When selecting an EDID, make sure that the display sync device is capable of supporting the resolution timing. If the sync device is not able to support a feature, then the source will not be displayed. Selecting the default EDID will provide the most compatible settings for most displays. In addition, two memory locations are available for storing captured EDID data. If an EDID is stored in a memory location, it will also be added to the list of available EDID selections. The following EDID present presets are available. Under EDID Saved, the display controller provides two memory locations used for storing captured EDID data. Click these drop-down lists to select the stored and external EDID. Under HDCP settings, click this drop-down list to select either compliant or non-compliant. Refer to HDCP content, page 20 of the manual, for more information. Click the Config button in the menu bar. The Config page provides management of administrator password. The administrator password, admin, cannot be changed. Refer to Password Management, page 21 of the user manual, for more information. Click on the System button in the menu bar. The System page is divided into two sections, Network and Systems. The Network section allows configuration of the IP settings of the display controller. The System section provides controls for resetting the display controller to factory default settings and updating the firmware. IP Mode. Click this toggle switch to set the display controller to DHCP or static IP mode. The default setting is DHCP mode. Enter the IP address of the display controller in this field. This field will only be available when IP mode is set to static IP. The default static IP address for the display controller is 192.168.1.254. Netmask. Enable the subnet mask of the display control in this field. The field will only be available when IP mode is set to static IP. The default static network mask is 255.255.0.0. Gateway. Enter the gateway, that's the router, IP address in this field. The field will only be available when IP mode is set to static IP. The default gateway is 192.168.1.1. Telnet port. Enter the desired Telnet port in this field. The default port is 23. Telnet mode login. Click this toggle switch to set the Telnet login mode to on or off. If set to on, the login credentials, same as the web server, will be required when starting a Telnet session. The default setting is on. Broadcast. Enables or disables broadcast mode. When set to on, any state change to the display controller will be reflected through the RS-232, Telnet, and TCP port 9000. State changes can be caused by modifications within the web server, physical connection, disconnection of source, sync, and additional Telnet TCP clients making changes. On equals broadcast enabled, off equals broadcast disabled. The default setting is on. Hostname. Displays the hostname of the display controller, as it would appear on a network. To change the hostname, type the new hostname name in this field and click the Save button. Reset to Default. Click the Factory Default button to reset the display controller to factory default settings. Firmware Update. Click the Choose File button to begin the firmware update procedure. And now you know how to set up and configure the display controller from Atlona. To learn more about this product and all the other great products from Atlona, visit us online at atlona.com.